Okay, uh, the slides, please. So I am going to continue on the thread of the importance of stories, stories that have been hidden from view. I'm going to share with you today uh, some uh, stories about my current research on the history of, Afri of the African American experience and public policies to conserve it in the Venice District of Los Angeles, California's uh, coastal zone, and that are showcased in my recent book, Living the California Dream, African American Leisure Sites During the Jim Crow Era. For Black Californians, the beach areas I will discuss became sites of resistance in the social and economic development of attractive recreational space relatively free from white citizens' harassment from the 1900s to the 1960s. Recreation and relaxation are essential components of liberty and cultural equity, as well as uh, contested ground in the struggle for freedom. Next slide, please. Intentionally, my work is a social justice action practice to expand knowledge <coughs> for the construction of a more inclusive public culture, historical memory, and national identity, encompassing the diverse experiences of the American people and to help dismantle institutional racism. This work provides enlightenment and inspiration and inspires change, as I hope the task force work will also accomplish. Your work, uh, the task force and my fellow colleagues today uh, testifying, like mine, has to ensure there is a collective understanding of our diverse and multi-layered history that is learned by all in the public square. Your support of recognition of more diverse sites and creation of new public displays that acknowledge the underrepresented and challenge hegemonic and white supremacist, white supremacist narratives will help connect to a more representative history and uh, a more representative history and identity, which can be a vehicle for healing and education, as well as cultural tourism in community. For this to happen, we need your support, uh, the task force support, to increase equitable access to deep knowledge and for place, uh, uh, from places uh, that create and preserve our cultural record and from scholarly texts to uh, community collections in archives, libraries, and other repositories. The stories and materials of historically underrepresented groups must be included in these narratives and cultural records to ensure that more authentic, reflective, complex, and nuanced stories are revealed, presented, and told, as this helps build an informed, culturally diverse, and civically engaged society. The task force recommendations should include funding ideas for this important work. As we are seeing today, this knowledge can be useful to elected officials like yourself to shape our present and future. Next slide, please. This, uh, these stories I will touch on have implications for our lives today as we can see how the denial of benefits of coastal access historically and in contemporary times continue to be civil rights, social justice, and health issues. Places to play at the beach are not luxuries or amenities, but an example of a fundamental human right under the United Nations Declaration of the Child. California and federal civil rights laws guarantee equal access to publicly funded resources and prohibit intentional discrimination and unjustified discriminatory impacts. But there continues to be disparate impacts due to the legacy of discrimination's past and current expressions, which must be overcome in providing opportunities for all, uh, uh, for all on our coast 
and otherwise. Next slide, please. African-Americans began moving in large numbers to the Los Angeles environs in the decades surrounding the turn of the 20th century, joining a multi-ethnic and multinational community. Of all socioeconomic classes, this new Negro generation migrated from United States southern to northern, midwestern, and far western parts in the post-World War I decades to escape the worst of racist anti-Black restrictions and violence. There were more, they were more self-confident and sometimes militant in demanding their rights as citizens and consumers. Like everyone else moving to the state, African-Americans embraced the booster-promoted California dream of a leisure lifestyle as a permanent way of life in picturesque outdoor settings, a mild climate, and new life opportunities even while discrimination and lax enforcement of California's civil rights laws established as early as 1893 many times prevented them from using various public and private facilities and buying land in many areas for decades into the 20th century. Despite the challenges throughout the early 20th century Great Migration, African Americans actively participated in California's growth and nurtured a rich cultural milieu. Next slide. Bruce's Beach in Manhattan Beach in Southwest Los Angeles County, which has been in the news a lot lately, was an early successful African-American residential resort community and day trippers leisure destination, which began in 1912. Racial discriminatory measures aided by destructive use of state power in 1924 eliminated their residential and economic development with attempts to erase the site from uh, site's memory from history. Next slide, please. The Bruce's Beach landlords and visitors were not alone in facing harassment actions discouraging African Americans from visiting and settling in particular beach locales as the region's population increased during the 1920s. In 1925, African Americans were forced uh, by white run civic and business groups to give up a development uh, of a beachfront resort in El Segundo the most violent intimidation campaign to evict African Americans from enjoying the beach was when arsonists, uh, white arsonists burned down the beautiful Pacific Beach Club in Huntington Beach um, shortly before it was supposed to open in 1926. Next slide. Activists mounted informal and legal challenges to these discriminatory actions endeavored by whites. Even with such violent attempts to evict African Americans from public beach space along the Southern California coast, this community's days of recreation and relaxation continued. Next slide. Although the Bruce's Beach community was raised, a successful National Association for the Advancement of Colored People protests and legal maneuver for unfettered beach access propelled African Americans more confident assertion of their legal rights, which in the coming decades contributed to racial restriction attempts at public beaches fading away. This was an important civil rights and uh, beach access victory, not only for African Americans, but for all Californians. Next slide, please. As the task force is aware, California Governor Gavin Newsom signed SB 796 to allow Los Angeles County supervisors <clears throat> to return the beachfront property they own to the descendants of uh, the resort business owners, Charles and Willa Bruce, from whom it was wrongfully taken in the 1920s. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This restitution opens opportunities for uh, the family to recoup generational wealth building that was lost. Some psychological healing happens for the lost opportunity for the family and the African-American com uh, community generally. This is all good, but 
we must think more deeply about the events of 100 years ago and their legacy. Tangible benefits will not be provided to the purged African Americans of all classes from Manhattan Beach that lost out on a vibrant sociocultural economic space <clears throat> where today uh, they make up less than half a percent of the city's 35,000 population. For broader benefits to occur, Elected officials like yourself on this task force need to implement socio cultural economic public policies and programs that encourage Afri the uh, encourage that uh, encourage African American community opportunities in Manhattan Beach and other California beaches. Next slide. In the city of Santa Monica, founded in the 1880s. African Americans were able to build a sustained community of landowners and renters that began irons of the Civic Center and High School and Phillips Chapel Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, the first African American institution established in this city. A short way south, a Venice enclave also forming was considered part of this early Santa Monica African American community. Next slide. In the years surrounding Phillips Chapel's 1908 purchasing of its own building at Fourth and Bay Streets, the oceanfront around uh, the oceanfront area down the hill around Pico Boulevard, south a few blocks to Bicknell Street, emerged as a gathering place where African Americans from all over the Los Angeles environs and beyond came to enjoy the beach's pleasures. While the boundary shifted through time, it was a popular destination for many African Americans into the early 1960s. Next slide. Area establishments provided services and accommodations for African Americans from Santa Monica and elsewhere, particularly those who came to enjoy the Pacific Ocean a few blocks away. Black regional residents and Los Angeles entrepreneurs attempting leisure space service business development for their community were challenged by various white supremacists' private hoarding of benefits and public policy measures inhibiting residential expansion and economic development close to the Pacific Ocean shoreline. Next slide. An example of this occurred in 1922 when a black investment group led by Norman O. Houston and Charles Darton was blocked from developing a first class resort and amusement facility along the oceanfront at Pico Boulevard. After, the, after they abandoned the plan, the property was purchased by white developers whose plans were approved, facilitating the construction of the iconic Casa del Mar Club, now uh, a hotel, and another beach club, the Edgewater, now the hotel shutters on the beach, all before 1930. Next slide. Another high profile act of white supremacist sabotage of African-American coastal zone businesses occurred in the 1950s when Santa Monica city authorities rushed in to take over land through eminent domain proceedings for a purported parking lot, forcing black investors to abandon the Ebony Beach Club project. These investors put up a giant sign asserting racial discrimination and tried to stop the city's proceedings in Superior Court, but lost. Now, the upscale Viceroy Hotel sits on the proposed uh, Ebony Beach Club site at Ocean Avenue and Pico Boulevard. The city continues to own this site and derives economic benefit from the hotel's revenue and occupational taxes and, and occupancy taxes. A similar deal could have been done with the Black Investment Group. Next slide. The African-American community of strivers, homeowners, and renters was pushed further inland due to the impacts of displacement from waves of urban renewal infrastructure projects and anti-Black housing practices. In contemporary times, this community 
has mattered in the reclamation of place and memory in history and heritage conservation programming that has been initiated by citizens and public officials. Local and national landmarking of Phillips Chapel and the Bay Street Beach Historic District respectively have engaged the public to learn about Santa Monica's historical African-American experience in U.S. history. Next slide. Other contemporary uh, programming such as Nick Gabaldon Day, California Coastal Cleanup Day, field trips for youngsters from inland areas, and the Belmar History Plus Art Project actively connect African Americans and others to more complex culturally inclusive stories of our collective national history, heritage conservation issues, beach wildlife appreciation and watershed stewardship, as well as aspirations to environmental justice policies involving beach access issues and social action intersecting with beach recreation. African American youth and those from other marginalized groups living in uh, California inland areas in some of these program in some of this programming get the chance to have introductory surfing lessons as part of the beach uh, recreation experience, which opens up new ways for them to realize their full uh, uh, potential as human beings. This programming helps to make these local stories more visible and shows the struggle for cultural equity along with social and political social political and economic issues reshaped the long freedom rights struggle next slide the los angeles uh go back a slide please next slide The Los Angeles Venice District of the California Coastal Zone, uh, in, in this area, African Americans began a formulation of a small neighborhood around 1910. These landowners and renters first worked for the white owned amusement business and opened small services, service businesses. Living a few blocks from the Pacific Ocean, this enclave continues to endure today due to its historical determination and skills of contesting and navigating discrimination. It, it has experienced waves of gentrification over the last half century. The most recent wave, next slide please, of high income white employees, uh, uh, high income whites employed in the entertainment and computer and computer technology industry are buying up properties and indulging wealthier and whiter tastes, which have had a more visible impact in marginalization of the Venice district's African American middle class and lower income homeowners and renters. Today, gentrification is not only creating a change in the character of this Venice area by reducing its racial, social, and economic diverse, diversity, but city politics are allowing the erasure of the historic legacy of the, pi, uh, of the Black pioneers and their descendant community. Next slide. Public officials such as yourselves need to lead uh, implementation of policies and programming to recognize and maintain this African-American residency and legacy in Los Angeles's Venice district. In California coastal cities, African-Americans have not obtained the full cultural, social and economic benefits that could have uh, potentially been developed because of the impacts of discrimination over the decades. They have faced waves of anti-Black discrimination and actions of economic sabotage by white supremacy to diminish Black wealth building from private practices and public policies. People living by the beach have the opportunity to make inroads into ocean sports historically rooted in whiteness in Southern California, which could be important to various types of socioeconomic attainment. African-Americans continue to be marginalized 
in their abilities to experience these opportunities due to lack of access. So African Americans have contributed to the region's social, cultural, political, economic milieu, uh, and to making the colorful history of California. We have a right to historical and cultural sites, a place in the American identity, and the joys of cultural expression and self-fulfillment, along with access to clean air, clean water, and enjoyment of all of America's natural and socioeconomic resources. Next slide. In closing, all tools, tools of public policy, education, conservation, and curation available must be used to expand knowledge for the recognition of underrepresented and, disempower and the disempowered in the redefining and reconstruction of a more inclusive public culture, historical memory, and national uh, identity encompassing diverse experiences of the American people and to help dismantle institutional racism for greater equity and justice in cultural and socioeconomic attainment for all Californians. I think that the Reparation Task Force can help us do a lot of this with their recommendation. Thank you.